Hello, good people. Welcome back to Global Happenings today. We are so excited to have you again. The militarization of South East has been a topical issue which is yet to be brought to an end. They had been cried out from different quarters, different individual, different groups, but it seems that it's not yielding result as expected. But this time around, some key groups, honest and Debo inclusive, have decided to send a strong words out to those who are in a position of authority, both in the military and also the governors, to do something drastic. You're going to see how much has been expended thus far by road users, motorists, and even travelers into the pocket of these so-called military men and police officers who have roadblocks. I don't know where they derive the figure from, but you're going to see how much they have expended and the experiences of most Southeasterners. Uh, but before we give you full details of that, we'd like to encourage you Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can get notification anytime we publish our video. Johannes Ndibo, resident of Southeast and groups in the area have condemned the heavy presence of the military and personnel of other security agencies on Southeast roads. They lamented that the numerous tortures and vicious illegal checkpoints on the dilapidated roads had made life unbearable for the people. Dr. Son learned that the issue would be slated for discussion on May 5th as the Amobi Oaneze deliberates on the 2023 presidency and the security situation in the Southeast. A report released by a right group, the International Society for Civil Liberties and Rule of Law in the Society, alleged that a whooping sum of 306 billion naira had been paid at gunpoint in the past 15 months, covering August 2015 and October 2019 by citizens of eastern Nigeria to estimated 600 military and 6,300 police roadblocks in the southeast and south-south region. A 2018 report by the group said the security agencies made over 100 billion naira in three years by extorting road users in those southeast checkpoints. Disturbed by the ugly trend, President General of Hannes and Debo, Judge Obuso, recently hosted the general officer commanding 82 Division Major General Daure Labaja at the National Secretariat of the Body. During their meeting, Ohanes and Debo explained to the commandant the inhuman treatment the civilians undergo under the very armed forces who, whose primary duty was to protect them. Hmm. Obviously, lamented various forms of indignity that the people of South East encounter in the hands of the security operatives and demanded from the GOC a security network that conformed to the best global practice. National Publicity Secretary of the group, Chief Alex Ogbonaya, yesterday said the situation appears to have further aggravated with checkpoints seem, seen in every two excuse me, as checkpoints have been seen in every two kilometers in the region. According to him, this was at variance with what was obtainable in other parts of the country. Obunaya gave instance of Ohanes and Debo leadership recent visit to Abiyokuta, Ogun State, to celebrate with former President Luseguno Basenjor at his 85th or 85th birthday. He said, we travel by road from Lagos to Abiyokuta, Ogun State, to celebrate Chief Olusegun Obasanjo at 85. To my chagrin, there was no single roadblock from Lagos to Abiyokuta. In contradistinction, every two kilometers in the southeast has a roadblock. You would see an army roadblock, police roadblock, federal road safety cop roadblock, vehicle inspection officers, roadblock, NDLEA roadblock, or a combination of all. Most disturbingly, each of the checkpoints extort money openly and shamelessly from the road users. It was further gathered that a high-placed Nigerians had on various occasions drawn the attention of the GOC and the Commissioner of Police in the Southeast to the illicit activities of police and 
soldiers, whom they said had turned the highways and rural roads into a cash cow by extorting heavy levies from motorists passing through the road. Several Igbo leaders who passed through the road to Ibuaoku in Aguata local government area of Anambra State for the burial of former Governor Chukwemeka Ezefi's wife, AGDK, recently had unpalatable stories to tell. An elder statement who attended the program from a wherry must still recounted how they stood in traffic for more than one hour at the checkpoint in Ihiala on the Onija Stroke Oweri Expressway. The traffic ground to a complete halt as there was no movement from Oweri to the Onicha Inn. All the vehicles going to Onicha from or going to Oweri from Onicha and vice versa all had their engines switch off. When a driver asked one of the hawkers selling water and snacks what caused the gridlock, she said that it has been shut down till 8 p.m. because the military men at the checkpoint had gone to pray and to break their fast. Therefore, the road had to be shut down. She said it was normal. Another, stood, another told the story of how he spent about four hours on his way to a burial at Oba. When we eventually got to the checkpoint after the road was open, I noticed that the other three men were collecting 100, 100 naira from every bus. The collection went on boldly without shame or care. The traffic jam stretched for over 5 kilometers every either way. Governor Zodima and Soludo should intervene on this matter. This is unacceptable. In the reaction, Hani is a father stated that one of the worst things that can happen to any country in the populace or is the populace, including children, to watch security operatives openly and shamelessly collecting bribe from or rob motorists with arrogance and bra bravado. The recurring confusion, it said, is how to draw a distinction between the notorious armed robbers with unlicensed gun and the government security operatives with licensed gun. The Apex Igbo group said the illicit toil gate phenomenon had brought excruciating pains as a journey of less than an hour now takes over two hours because of gridlock mostly occasioned by these roadblocks and checkpoints. Two other groups, the Evo National Council INC and the Coalition of Southeast Youth Leader, COSEL, EYL have joined the call for the immediate dismantling of the various military checkpoints in the zone. Reacting to the development, the groups in the other separate statement frowned at the alleged extrajudicial killing of youths in the zone, as well as extortion by the military president general of INC Chilogs Godsin accused the security agents of criminal extortion of motorists on checkpoints, maltreatment of travelers, adding that the Joint Military Tax Force had on many occasions been procured and used illegally illegally by civilians as debt as debt collectors and tools to intimidate the people. President General of COSEYL Good luck, Ibem, noted that the militarization of the Southeast is a further confirmation of the fact that Nigeria is a failed state. Gosen mentioned the military checkpoint at Uku, Oji, in Mbaitulu local government area, Akachi Junction, along Aba Road in Naze, Imu State, and Iyala exists in Anambra State as the most notorious when it comes to the issue of extortion. According to him, the military personnel at these locations act with reckless impunity in maltreatment of travelers. Ibm declared, we view the militarization of the Southeast as an insult and an effort on the sensibility or affront. I'll take that again. He said, Ibm declared that we view the militarization of the Southeast as an insult and an affront on the sensibility and integrity of the people of the Southeast, and we fervently condemn it and call for immediate dismantling of all military and police checkpoints because they have outserved their purposes. Mm. I mean, this is really um, 
a troubling one for the Southeastern, as this thing has been pending for a while now. And unfortunately, no one has taken out time to address it. But somehow, if you look at it from objectively, you will know that even the um, governors seems uh, have their backs tied to their back. Reason being that these so-called UGM guys, uh, every now and then, are always available to carry out some very terrible things around the environment. We've seen diverse kind of attack when it has to do with uh, some of the police uh, settlement, where that's police uh, uh, architecture, where they are supposed to be. Oftentimes we hear they've invaded this place, invaded it, somehow causing them to be stagnant in the southeast. I'm very hopeful that very soon that these guys, the so-called UGM, will come back to their sentences and quit so that one can table a good reason why the military and the police should not be there again. You know, unfortunately in Nigeria, um, one of the most uh, profound um, uh, evil that is prevalent is the issue of uh, bribe collection. It's normal in Nigeria right now. I don't know how that will be settled, but I'm hopeful that very soon it will be settled. I'd like to leave it there. Go to our comment section. Listen to that. What's your standpoint on the issue of militarization of the Southeast?